Hello, and today we're going to be talking about solving problems using Venn diagrams, otherwise known as sets. So, first thing that we need to talk about is what is a set? So, a set is basically a group of numbers, and we write it as this. We use the curly bracket here, and then we put in our numbers separated by commas and then we close the bracket like so so what I just wrote here is a set called A and it's usually a capital letter and this set contains the numbers 1, 2 and 3 now okay that's great how does this relate to Venn diagrams? well you imagine a Venn diagram circle and we labeled this A then this circle will have 1, 2, and 3 inside. And the rest of the numbers, like 4, 5, 6, etc., outside it, like so. So, okay, that's great. How, how, what, what if we want to make it a little bit more complicated? A, a Venn diagram like this doesn't exactly tell you much. Let's define another set, B, and we will make it have 3, 4, and 5, like so, and well, now what does our Venn diagram looks like? Okay, so we still have the outside box here, and then now we have two circles, and the overlapping is they share this number 3, so 3 is in here, call this circle A, and we'll call this circle B, B, there we go, and now we can put in 1 and 2, in our first circle and in our second circle we can put 4 and 5 now there's one thing that we haven't actually done that we need to do and that is define the universal set so what that is is basically in all the numbers and things that you can have in the Venn diagram what exactly are we taking from that what, what data set are we taking from? So we call this the universal set. And it's like a kind of like a backwards E with a, a loop in the middle. It's kind of like a backwards three with a loop in the center there. And we define the universal set. And let's say I want numbers. 1 to 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we'll include 10 as well. Here's our universal set, so in our diagram, we put the little backwards 3 in, the universal set symbol, and then we have to fill in all the numbers. So, set A and B are inside the universal set, and they take up a little bit of it, but the rest of it, from numbers 6 onwards, are not part of any set, but they are still part of our universal set, so we just leave them outside. So, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we'll put 10 over here. Right? So here we have a very basic Venn diagram with a whole bunch of numbers, numbers 1 to 10. And we've got, a, and it's, we've defined three sets the universal set, set A, and set B. Well, great. What's, what's the point of this? Well, well, we can express these things more mathematically now. So let's say set A was the number of students that did mathematics, and say set B was the number of students that did history, right? There are other students that didn't do mathematics or history, there is one student that did mathematics and history 
and there are two students that did just mathematics or just history All right now we can get more complicated by adding even more sets of data and uh, putting more stuff in here but I want to start talking about actual mathematical notation so let's let's quickly define a set set one two and three let's close the set and let's define another set and we won't talk about the universal set for now three four and five okay so let's let's draw this it's the same thing we have three in the middle we have four we have five we have one and two is a is b all right so if I want to talk about the intersection of these two sets where where these two sets meet what they share is this bit right here highlighted in green I can say a intersection B so this little symbol here this upside down U that's known as intersection well, otherwise known as and so a and B well that's free and we can define that as free that's free okay that's great what if I want everything but a we can do that too we'll say a and we'll put this dash here and that's just saying everything except for a so what's not part of a well this free is still part of a but everything else is fine so everything here right this bit of b is fine the rest of the universal set is fine it's just not a since there's nothing in the universal set in this case it's just this four comma five oh great what if we want to get even more complicated what if we wanted to say I want everything in a or B so a or B B. So this will get everything in A and everything in B. Like so. And that, right? Okay, what if we, we don't want those two anymore? We want, we, we don't want A or B at all. So not A and not B, not A or not B, so we're just getting the rest of the universal set here. Highlighted in green, right? And in this case, there's nothing in here. This is actually a perfect segue to the next thing. What if there is nothing in a particular set? Well, there's two ways that you can write it. You can write it as this, just the two brackets with nothing inside them. Or you can write it as a circle with a line through it, like here. And these make these mean the exact same thing. There is no set or there's nothing inside it. Which one you choose doesn't matter. It means the exact same thing. Okay, let's move on. Let's change this set to include a 6 now. What if I want to be able to count how many how many items or elements as they're called uh, are in any given set. I write the set name and then I put two lines next to it and that will that's just asking how many things are there? How many elements? So there is in set A there are three elements so this is three 
Notice that we don't put it in that curly bracket. We're not saying that this is a set, we're saying that this is how many things are in a particular set. So this is more useful when you want to talk about um, students that teach certain subjects or people that speak different languages. Some speak uh, two different languages, some speak like three, and etc. I use the term called elements, but what, what does that mean? So an element, an element is something inside a particular set. So I can say that three is an element, notice the sign, of A or B. And that really doesn't help me. Uh, no. Okay. Edit that bit out. So I can say that three is an element of A and B. Right? By saying that three is an element of A and B, I know that free must be there in our little intersection, right? A intersection B here, you know, highlighted in green, has an element of free. Alright, great. Okay. So if you don't like the and and or analogy for these two symbols because lots of people confuse them right there's a simple way to remember them right remember them by their name actually I'll write both this is union and this is intersection. That's the same thing, right? I actually prefer saying union and intersection because that to me makes more sense. So when we're talking about an intersection, we're talking about this bit right here in highlighted in green, right? we're talking about a union both sets okay so we have two sets here and if we were going to draw a Venn diagram for this set so it would look a little something like this so here's a but all of B is actually inside of a with one and two and the only thing that A has to itself is free. So we can describe this relationship mathematically as well. So we can say that so we can say that B is a subset of A. Or we could say that A is a superscript of B. Su super A is a superset of B. So what this means is A contains B, right? And what this is saying here is B is contained inside of A, right? So another thing that we can do when we are talking about sets is we can subtract sets from each other. So we want a minus B and it's going to be the a new subset that's going to be defined as just free right in this particular case anyway if B had something like a 4 that would also be here right we're just eliminating the 1 and 2 from A right Another way to express this is 
uh, with a slash instead of a minus sign. Um, you can use both. So that was uh, Things I'll Forget Sets, part one. In the next part, we will talk about types of numbers and the sets that they belong in. And I will see you in the next video.